We are following some breaking news this morning. A plane crash in East Birmingham. According to initial reports, a UPS cargo plane has gone down near the Birmingham airport. It's right now, we believe, near 19th Avenue North and North East Lake Boulevard. Our crew on the scene says the wreckage of the plane is burning. And because of that, photographers weren't allowed to get very close. This is about as close as they could get uh, to get this video. Our crew reports two explosions so far in that wreckage, and there could be debris covering about a half mile area. Some breaking news for you this morning. That plane crash in East Birmingham, according to initial reports, a UPS cargo plane crash near the airport upon landing this morning or attempting to land it happened near 19th Avenue North and North East Lake Boulevard. Now we've learned that it was an Airbus A300, a pretty large wide body jet. The plane was en route from Louisville, Kentucky, about to land at the Birmingham Shuttlesworth International Airport. Our crew on the scene brought back some amazing pictures as firefighters try to battle the debris fire there from the wreckage. We understand two explosions after the plane crashed as well, and that debris may in fact be uh, covering about a half mile area there near Northeast Lake Boulevard. Uh, the wreckage, uh, they're still burning. Of course, we have the very latest uh, coming in for us all morning long. We've been covering this, and this happened just before daybreak this morning. Again, roads leading to the airport from the communities surrounding the airport are going to be shut down as fire and emergency crews try to deal with this. But we understand from airport officials that this crash has not affected airport operations. So air, regular airport traffic is still moving in and out of the uh, Birmingham airport. Of course, not a lot happening there overnight, usually just these cargo planes coming in and out of the airport airport in the overnight areas. The uh, chairwoman of the Birmingham International Airport Authority, Ms. Gaynell Hendricks, good morning good to morning. you. We have confirmation about the two bodies on board yes. flight UPS 1354 dying. Grim news. What else can you tell us at this time, ma'am? Well, I think the bodies are still there on the plane. The um cockpit area was severed from the rest of the plane. You get a good idea of just how bad this damage is. The area surrounding the crash has been secured. Mayor Bell said they had to secure a larger area than they originally expected because debris of the debris from the crash scattered around the area. Well, let's go ahead and show you the first footage from above aerial footage that we're showing you here on Alabama's 13. You can see the wreckage from above here. What's left of the plane again, two pilots confirmed dead on UPS cargo flight 1354 flight from Louisville, Kentucky, landing here at the um, in Birmingham. The wreckage just on North East Lake Boulevard in an open field. Looks first another look back at the aerial view of the damage today. The Airbus A300 is a wide body plane, one of the largest in the air. We went up in a chopper to get these shots just before they closed the airspace. As you can see, the crash site is in a large area in neighborhoods near the airport. A wing separated from the plane's body. There's still some smoke tonight coming up from the tail section. The crash did hit some trees on the way down and also hit some power lines too, and there were some power outages. Much of the area have been bought by the airport as part of a noise abatement program about 20 years ago. There are many who drive more than just cars here in St. Clair County. I mean, look at it. It's beautiful. Beautiful stretches of waterways like Logan Martin Lake, where lakeside living can be found at its finest. We try to strike a balance between uh, rural and urban and creating various communities countywide to sustain an enjoyable quality of life. It's a key focus from splash pads to I like the sun. I'd rather be out in it outside than inside any day. Less than an hour up Interstate 59 from Birmingham, you'll find tonight we are taking you to Blunt County where Aniana is the county seat. Tita Bowden finds out what's working in Blunt County as leaders are looking at new ways to attract people to the area. Taking it all in, this is a place where your eyes can scan breathtaking bluff views across hundreds of acres of rural land. Blunt County described as beautiful, beautiful and beautiful. Blunt County is, is, is like a big family. It's really a hidden secret. Religious based community. It's agricultural in nature. Trustworthy. It's good folks. Folks like Amy Alban. In fact, Alabama's only victory against Notre Dame came on a hot October day back in 1986 here at Birmingham's own Legion Field. The game featured a handful of explosive touchdowns for the Tide, but is most remembered for a play on the other side of the ball. It was the middle of the first quarter. The game was scoreless. The Fighting Irish had the ball on their own 33-yard line. Or Notre Dame. 
First down for the Irish. They come out with two backs. Anthony Johnson, the tailback. Tom Monahan in at fullback. Birmingham native Cornelius Bennett lined up wide left at linebacker. Senior Notre Dame quarterback Steve Berline dropped back for a play action pass. Left guard Tom Freeman was supposed to pull right and block Berline's blind side, but he didn't get there in time. So after Berline faked a handoff to tailback Anthony Thompson, he turned and saw the 235 pound Bennett bearing down on him at full speed. And down goes Berline, Cornelius Bennett. Bennett drove Berline from the 25 back to the 22 yard line at this spot. The sack set the tone for the rest of the game, the Tide's sole victory against the Irish. <laughs> You've broken or sprained a limb, have a stuffy head or have some sort of discomfort and you need health care in a hurry, but your doctor's office is closed or you don't have a doctor at all. Which do you choose, emergency room or urgent care? On this day, Darren Hamby has brought his mother-in-law to the ER at Gadsden Regional Medical Center. She broke her foot. My wife got there and we discussed it and we decided that we needed to call an ambulance instead of trying to bring her in ourselves. The average cost of your primary care doctor is $100. The average cost at urgent care, $118. And ER, $300. So how do you know when to go where? If you're experiencing chest pain, any signs of a heart attack, and that can include pain, pressure. It can be in your chest, it can be in your arm, your shoulder, your jaw. Uh, any number of areas that are equivalent to chest pain, uh, that's an ambulance right away. Call them, come straight to the ER. When Brad Hobbs and East Lake resident Richard Rutledge videotaped this discovery at the former Banks High School a few weeks ago, Tennis rosters. Okay. With, with social security numbers. The student record security breach spearheaded a quick response. The Birmingham School District told us staff has been working to remove the items. We walked around the outside of each school with a camera to see if there were any open doors or windows. At many, like Gate City Elementary, the doors were welded shut, while others, like Tuxedo Elementary, were surrounded by locked security fences. But we also found a handful of security shortcomings. There's a TV right there. Out of the 15 we inspected, nine of the closed schools had very few, if any, entry points, and we rated them secure. Three others, Wilson Elementary, Powderly Elementary, and Arthur Elementary were mostly secure. At Wilson Elementary, we found the door to a portable classroom open with a television inside. Powderly was locked up tight out front, but we found a few windows open around back, including this one, which revealed a stockpile of nursery furniture. Arthur Elementary's main building was secure, but this door to a portable classroom was wide open, with a filing cabinet a few feet away. That leaves Price Elementary, Riggins Alternative School, and Going Elementary. Those three campuses earned our unsecure rating. At first blush, it may not seem like much, but this is Alabama's fourth nudist resort, complete with pool, pool house, spa, and seven rooms furnished for overnight stays. It joins 260 others in the U.S. who manage a $400 million U.S. industry, a billion dollars in North America. This new one called The Retreat officially opened March 15th in Blount County. We had a lot of people come in. We had a barbecue. We had people everywhere. Neighbors we talked to have no complaints. I have other good neighbors too, but the, the two of the best ones are the nudist camp and the cemetery. Neither one of them, people in it, give me any trouble at all. In our investigation, we checked with the Blount County Sheriff and the District Attorney's Office. And while the District Attorney said there have been some upset people, there have been no formal complaints filed against the Beasleys. The Iron Bull is one of the greatest rivalries in all of college football. But how fierce are the fans? Well, we're about to find out. Hi, -o. War Eagle, number one. Roll Tide. What are you doing here, hot dog? Me? Yeah. You're in the wrong part of town. This doesn't seem like the right color for this town. This doesn't seem like the right color? Just hanging out. All right, yeah, you look like a anyway. Hey, War Eagle. Number, you know number 12 did you guys last time? Dude. Roll Tide, yeah, you look kind of funny, man. Kind of is, is this trying to have one this today? Probably not. Bad no, choice? No. no. Roll Tide, guys. What? You want to try this hat on? I'm good. You guys look, I'm going to try it. I would actually love to look your 
front of Auburn Nation and Alabama Nation. Can I do that? Or is this like going somewhere where I can't do that? I saw your little encounter over there. Yeah, yeah what do you think of that? Yeah, that guy, a that, that's a typical Bama fan, isn't it? So I deserve everything I got. Roll Tide, War Eagle, War Eagle, Roll Tide. I'm Kyle Berger, and that's a Burger Bite. This morning's explosion rocked the entire community. You can see from this video the building where the explosion took place collapsed. Authorities say people inside had to crawl under rubble in order to escape. Everyone had to evac everyone in this community had to evacuate for a short time this morning. Residents gathered outside comforting each other. Many say that they are still in shock about this morning's explosion. The explosion happened like as soon as I got up. And um, I was waiting. I just stood there because I didn't know what was going on. I was in the house watching TV and then we heard a big boom, like a breaker was going off, but it was louder than that. Like a, it shook the apartment complex. So we woke, we kind of got up like, hey, what's going on? That don't sound right. So she went to the window and looked out the window, the apartment was on fire. I mean, blazing fire. Now, the apartment complex sent out an update just moments ago. They have confirmed that four units were destroyed in this morning's explosion. Two of those units were vacant. Right now, they're working to find homes for those that have been displaced by this morning's explosion. Now, authorities say that they do believe that this explosion was caused by a natural gas leak. Crews from Allegasco have been out on the scene this morning, and they're still here investigating a possible leak. Ready, set, let's make a splash. I'm diving in and going under to overcome my fear of the water. And I'm here with Kalisha, swimming with her along the way. So is Wendy Clarson, and she's teaching Kalisha the basics. But first, Wendy wanted to know why she's scared of the water. It started when I was a toddler. My dad had me on his back doing as he's breaststroke. And my mom was yelling, Kalisha, Gary, Gary, bring my baby back. And he looks back at her and says, Ruthie, she's my daughter too. I'm not going to let anything happen to her. And I remember as a toddler looking like, oh my goodness, this can hurt you. Since then, she hasn't been in. Whatever. But I'm ready now. First, Wendy teaches breathing basics. You want to start with just the mouth right here. Saturday is spent in one place, surrounded by concrete. But the tradition of Auburn football is not just defined by a concrete stadium like Jordan Hare or even the green grass of Pat Dye Field. It can be defined by a green of a different sort. They symbolize victory. They symbolize elation. They symbolize triumph, joy, and pride. Auburn going after it. Here's a good snap. It is blocked! It is blocked! It's caught on the run! They symbolize winning. They symbolize championships. They symbolize Pat, Cam, and Bo. Jackson, touchdown. They symbolize life. They symbolize memories. They symbolize wedding proposals, first baby pictures, and college decisions. They symbolize our state. They symbolize our game. They symbolize love, friends, and family. They symbolize tragedy. They symbolize senselessness. They symbolize life, death, and rebirth. The branches of these trees extend far beyond the edges of Toomer's Corner. They extend back to generations of Auburn fans linked together throughout the years as they watched their version of the Tigers, from Jordans to Malzahn's. Always ahead of the weather. Now, Alabama's 13 Interceptor weather forecast. It was an afternoon of heavy thunderstorms in some areas, in some cases causing flooding, significant flooding in some places. Everything is settled down now, and for the rest of the overnight period, I think we're in pretty good shape. Here are your forecast facts now as we look toward the future. More storms are coming, even though it has settled down. I look for a repeat development tomorrow. It doesn't mean the heavy storms will be in exactly the same places, but nonetheless, some folks are likely to get heavy downpours once again. I wouldn't be surprised if we go through another period of some flash flood warnings for specific counties. First thing in the morning, some patchy fog, otherwise sunshine, 78 by 9 and 84 degrees by 11 a.m. Very good, Jerry. Thank you. And that's Alabama's 13 News for now. The Tonight Show is coming up next. Alabama's 13 News continues at 430 tomorrow morning. Between our newscast, the news is available whenever you want it at alabamas13.com and join the conversation with us on Facebook and Twitter, too. For everybody here, have a great night, everybody.